Good evening, everybody. Welcome along to PSGL Season 26. This is the F2 tier, and we are at round number 10. For the Chinese Grand Prix, the championship is definitely going down to the wire here, and we should be in for an exciting final few rounds of the championship. So we're going to have a look at the track then first of all before we kick off the introductions. It's 5.4 kilometres long and it has 16 turns with two DRS zones, one at the start finish straight and then we got one on the back straight as well. So probably those two are going to be the potential uh, bits for overtaking here today. My name is Jess and joining me as per usual, we've got Dan. Hello everyone and hello Jess. Cannot wait for this race. Of course, China is a pretty challenging track and some of these guys might not like it. Some of them do. One thing I do know is that this track is really good for the pad. So we could see some guys on uh, the controller who might not perform so well at the early parts of the season really come to their element in this track. Exactly. And if you're watching last week's race, well, where have, where have you been? If you didn't watch last week's race, it was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed every minute of it. And we saw Greeny take his first win of the season, which was absolutely incredible. It was great to watch. Um, he, he, he was lucky with a safety car, to tell you the truth. However, um, there is nothing more he could have done. And he's made some really good moves um, on the outside of 130R. And if you have not checked my uh, Twitter page, then uh, you uh, probably have missed out. And it was absolutely fantastic. And a lot of people going for very brave moves as well. Pat got his first podium of the season. Compassion got his best result of the season. There was a lot of... Uh, this, this was a race where we had a lot of bets, didn't we? Yeah, and uh, of course we had an all-German podium, which I'm sure uh, they would have all loved to have seen. Of course, CC Brain picking up the win in that one. It wasn't green, it was his teammate. Just uh, needed to correct it there, but well, really CC well done. CC Brain, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> getting really confused. Well <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, he did so, so well, and uh, I do apologise that my mic wasn't as good last week. I th hope it is better this week, uh, but I was sitting really far away, but now I have got it improved, so uh, I hopefully will be alright in that regard. Yeah, we hope so, fingers crossed, and uh, you know, the strategy should be interesting as well. Maybe a few people doing soft to hard, maybe mediums to hard, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about that later on, but looking at the drivers, uh, standings uh, Shizu Tomato 71 points separate him between uh, him and Farswood I think it's a six or seven point gap between them then we got Will then Greeny then Dario then Lakitu CC Brain in eighth due to his uh, win last week then Hadler and then we got Bit Big C Pat who's climbed all the way up into P13 and then we got name changer Ski Van Imoti Compassion Bugatti Benny and Chapalili and uh, a lot of people um uh, we're missing from that uh, um, because obviously they haven't, sc he haven't scored any points. Gonanen was very, very unlucky last week. We thought he was going to be on for a podium, even a win, but unfortunately it just did not happen. Yeah, he really did have the pace and uh, he was fighting with the championship leader, Tomato, and neither of them had a good result. The safe car really did throw their race out the window and, uh, of course, uh, Fortune just did not go their way it was uh, so so unlucky for them of course Gonan was actually in a points paying position he was uh, one of the leaders and then uh, unfortunately he dropped out of the points due to penalties so really a race to forget for the flying fin but of course he can bounce back he knows he's got that pace so I'd expect him to have a good one today yep indeed so in a minute we're gonna be uh, going through um, on board a lap with uh, what well, we may as well go on board a lap with uh, one of our uh, uh, seven-time world champ, well, seven-time uh, PSGL champion, Big C. And uh, for those of you that noticed, we've got a bit of a nice overlay going on here today, showing us going through all the laps. Now, uh, I'm trying to go through all the PSN names at once. I've still got quite a few to do because I have to do it manually, so that's why um, I'm doing a few as they come along. So Hadler's on pole at the moment. We could expect people to go into the 128s, I would say, in the qualifying, maybe 129s as well, but I think we're going to go way beyond the 129s. And just to let you know, we've got two reserves as well. Chapalili filling in for Cedric, Louis filling in for the other McLaren as well. So Big C green in the first set, so not quite purple compared to the likes of Chapalili and Dario so far, but looking really good in at sector two right now. I may as well get the lap data turned off because you don't need that um, anymore as he's a 27-3 um, in the middle sector he goes then. 
So uh, let's see what he does. Coming into one of the, the next DRS zones. Um, and he's got he's got no ERS. I don't think he's going to go for a lap by the looks of things. But I'm guessing he just wants to get a little bit of a feel for the car. Nope, he's got DRS. So uh, um, is it is it normal to have no ERS on your uh, banker lap, do you think, Dan? Uh, definitely not. He would he would 100% be uh, pushing here. So I think Big C is probably going to go for another one or just dive into the pits. He's knocked it up into hot lap, so definitely going to go for another run here. He might have made a mistake and he's actually invalidated his run. And that will put him in valid for the next lap as well. So uh, that has pretty much halted Big C's plan. He probably just wanted to get a feel for the track on his out lap and uh, banker lap and then go for a proper push there. But the mistake oh. did not work out for him. And I've just seen you've left the session. Yeah, I don't know what's happened there. I do apologise. Um, I can get you an invite if you need one. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you could do a little bit of uh, radio commentary whilst I try and uh, get in. I do. I, again, I do apologise. I've just got to send the invite. Hang on. PSN's been really bad lately, so it uh, might take a little... Oh, no, it's all right. Uh, so, right, I'll watch... Who should I watch on a lap? I've got, I've got Bugatti on a run at the moment. He's actually just spun the car coming through uh, the second sector split there. So I'm going to put a swift end to his lap. We've got Name Changer just coming up towards the end of his lap. And I believe that you've just rejoined. So uh, get in as soon as possible. And I'm you can trying, take over I'm from trying. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying the best yeah. I can. Yeah, but just at the moment, everyone seems to be coming in on their in laps. Uh, I think Will has just put in a run, but it was not a fast time at all. A 139 flat. So uh, definitely off the pace that he's going to... 100% improve on that one. He had a good race last week out, uh, Will did. Of course, I believe he was one of the drivers that did get caught out by the safety car coming in quite late. But he did manage to take five points and he actually closed up to both of his championship rivals who uh, scored pretty much minimal points. It was a really, uh, it was a crazy race actually that we didn't really expect. It was a bit like uh, Italy this year where we had the podium being drivers who have got pace but they've just not had the opportunity to do so well and uh, that really did throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, it did. And we may see something similar here as well but, uh, you know, uh, China's known for its uh, changing weather conditions. I've seen it in quite a few leagues myself but uh, probably we may get a uh, something different we'll have to wait and see but uh we haven't had any groans from the drivers in the chat so uh looks like we're all good in terms of the weather front i have to say um in terms of what we're going to experience today so i'm, I'm pretty relieved about that as uh, most of the races this season have been uh were affected apart from last week where it was a dry quality and a dry race where the last few sessions i was vietnam and the one before that uh had um, um a session where it was uh quite uh, nasty as well and there was a full wet race I believe in Silverstone too which I experienced a couple of weeks ago so let's hope we don't see a full wet here uh, today but uh, you never know Nikita uh, last week's podium sitter is on his out lap at the moment and he's hoping to score points for Renault who are currently I believe second in the Constructors Championship. Yeah of course uh, the result from Nikita last week really did uh, boost their championship challenge and now uh, with Rafa being out of the picture it's going to be a lot more difficult uh, for the Williams team to pull away like they did because Rafa was just so, so dominant against everyone else just in the constructors at the moment. I will just mention the gap between the two. So it's Williams on 146 and then Renault on 142. They got five more points than the Williams team did uh, Renault. So they did close in just by a little bit, but that's 44 points separating the two teams. So the challenge is certainly not over with uh, five races left in the season. Five, only five races left on the calendar it's flown by hasn't it yeah it has i mean it's been one of my favorite seasons I well it's my it's both the first of our seasons that we've ever commentated in psgl none of us has commentated on psgl before and uh, they're definitely not disappointed as lakitu has invalidated his outlap now the gatti's only joined a few seasons uh, well not a few seasons a few races ago but he's not doing too bad he didn't score any points last week we had a double dnf from the mercedes drivers last week which is a bit of a shame but uh he's got a lot of points to prove he's one of the f2 champions of seasons past he was f2 champion last season and obviously we've got will who was f2 champion season 23 and tomato who was a champion in season 24 as well so you know it is basically a fight for who is going to be um the best of the f2 champions at the moment it's looking like to be a uh, tomato but we could see will catching up will i believe is only third in the championship so 
Um, Will is going to be hunting for that uh, best title. And maybe he can win the Season 26 Championship. That's how uh, close it has been so far. Yeah, and of course, uh, with the Champions of Champions uh, champion, uh, Championship, a lot of champions there. Uh, it is Will leading the way. And then I believe it's Tomato in second and Bugatti in third in that respect. Uh, but we've got the uh, Mercedes driver. He's got his teammate ahead of him uh, of Big C, who's just put in a lap. I hope there was no slipstreaming going on from those two uh, because it is banned this season. But hopefully we see uh, Big C get out of his teammate's way into the hairpin. He goes, yeah, he's just going to pull off to the right-hand side, make sure he's not on the apex or anything. And that was a nice way to let his teammate go through as uh, he's actually backed off on this lap. I don't know where he backed off. He might have just backed off right now, but I thought he was pushing. And unfortunately, he's not going to put a lap in this time by. Nope, he is not. Now, there's a few people still yet to set a lap time as well. And the softs, I'm quite surprised a lot more people are going for the soft compound than either. We did see someone that's spinning off. Not entirely sure who that was, unfortunately. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think we could see a lot of tyre temperature issues today. The, the back end's going to be a little bit of an issue. ERS management's going to be tricky as well. There's a lot more... Um, uh, straights to manage and uh, turn one to three is going to be quite difficult for the brakes as well so you've got to warm up your brakes a lot in uh, the formation lap and under uh, and lap one to be honest so uh, I think due to the fact that there's only five more rounds to go of this season I think a lot of these guys that are not in the championship that are teammates they're going to be I think playing the wingman role I've got to say whereas I think um, Obviously, Imossi joined uh, very recently, so he's going to be helping Smarto. Lakitu, I'm not entirely sure about Lakitu. Maybe he wants to try and gain as many positions as himself, because even though Faz is leading his teammate away, you know, what would you do if you were in Lakitu's situation? Would you want to help your teammate out, or would you want to go out and fend for yourself? Well, realistically speaking, if I were Lakitu, I would be playing the team game here, despite he's had the some good results in the past he is 33 points off the championship lead where his teammate Faz is only five so uh, I would probably try and play the team game here and then try and help Breno and the constructors rather than holding up uh, the teammate but of course that's all up to Lakitu he can do whatever he pleases and uh, yeah it, it, he's got pace so he can probably fight his teammate and not get hurt too hard by it but uh, I'd say he's out of the championship hunt I'd probably only say about five drivers can realistically win the championship at this point. Tomato, Faz, Will, Greeny and Dario. Yep, that's what I think so as well. So uh, something to watch out for. Dario is a definitely a bit of a dark horse. Dario only joined, like, again, halfway through the season. And he won um, quite a few races. Well, he won, I believe he won one race, which he did really well in as well. And uh, he played... Uh, one of the strategies that you probably weren't expecting to. I need to try and actually see which race he won because it's been a long time ago. He won in Italy where there was quite a lot of things that happened uh, in Italy, I've got to say. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is, again, it's not over for him. But, I mean, he may do a Lewis Hamilton on us and say, right, I, I still have a shot, shot of this championship. Or maybe do a Vettel in 2010, like we said last week. Devel in 2010, not uh, lead the championship until the final race. Because don't forget, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that Dario is a dark horse in this championship. He seems to be uh, either in a really good point playing position or not in the points at all. So he doesn't fend for uh, the lower positions. It's either a win or wall for him. And I do like that mentality. Also, we haven't actually seen him in the wall. We have seen him retire uh, once this season in the in the Netherlands. I don't quite remember what happened to him in that race, but currently, but in the, at the moment in uh, in qualifying, he's doing really well for himself considering most of his championship challenges are further down the order. You know, Greeny in 12th, Tomato in 13th, and Faz in 15th, Will all the way down in 17th. So uh, this could look good for Dario in his championship hunt. He is pushing at the moment on a lap, so uh, if we could probably follow him, that would be uh, pretty good. Who, as, who uh, was that, sorry? Uh, Dario is just coming through the hairpin now and he's got a Mercedes car of Bugatti just ahead of him. Bugatti does seem to be on a lap but he has invalidated. So coming through the final corner now, they are being told, oh, come oh, on. You're oh, he's invalidated. I was just about to show if he was purple, but no, he didn't oh. show on a lap. So uh, that was unfortunate. 
IGK Kurax has done exactly the same thing. He's gone into the pits as well. So, uh, quite a few people invited. There's only three minutes left to go. I'm trying to see who's actually on the lap at the moment. I can go on board with. Name Changer has invalidated too. You know, to be fair, I would have invalidated quite a bit around this circuit already. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a shame for Name Changer. But he comes into the pits um, for his final lap. I um, mean, Motti is on a lap and I just lost connection again. So that's not good. So uh, I think I've got some spare invites. So I'll try and get in again. PSN has uh, been having some issues recently, so we do apologise. Yeah, so uh, whilst you're doing that and trying to get back into the session, I'll just do some more radio commentary. We're just flying through the uh, middle sector at the moment on board with him. Motti. He's looked pretty clean on this lap so far, just short shifting up the gears, coming up towards the second sector split, just at this uh, little mini straight up towards the uh, long sweeping right hand. But he is two tenths up, two and a quarter tenths up on his previous time. This could see him shoot up into the top three and now opening it onto this uh, long sweeping right hander and now on to the longest straight on the circuit you don't get DRS until about halfway down and now opening it up you can see the rear wing are wide wide open getting him that extra bit of a drag reduction and now into the braking zone just before the 100 meter board locking up heavily running quite deep through there and now uh, just a little bit of oversteer correction on exit and now up towards you want to break just under the armco there and now on the exit he's run it pretty nicely through there and now up to the line Iamotti got fourth fastest so uh, he lost a little bit of time in the third sector but it was a really nice lap and now second row lockout for IGK. Yeah that is pretty good indeed for IGK we got last week's winner CC Bale I think I've just gone in so uh um, into the session so hopefully we are all right in that regard so CC Brain now is uh, coming up to sector two now and he's got a little bit of traffic as well to contend with at the moment but he's uh, i think he's in the right position so uh at least he is gonna be all right in that regard he's purple well he's green in sector one at the moment we're gonna see how he is with the sector two split coming up potentially very soon as we go towards uh the right uh, the hair pin now i usually get things messed up in that chicane as well he's green again so not quite purple yet i don't think he's aiming for pole because he, he didn't get pole last time and he still went on to uh win the race so uh, uh anything is possible for the ferrari driver he's gonna have a little bit of a toe from golden i uh, don't think that was meant to happen that might have gained quite a bit of time um in the slipstream as well so we'll have to wait and see of course we've got kurats as well I think this is going to be a quite a clean lap from CC uh, Brain at the moment. So let's see. That was almost an invalidation. And it's a 129.094, which puts him into P3. And he gone purple in the final sector. That means everything for CC Brain. Yeah, it was going to be that slipstream that he got from Gonan. And obviously wasn't intentional because you're not allowed to do that in the uh, PSGL. So Gonan would have been getting a penalty. And why would he help CC Brain? He's not his teammate. So it uh, wasn't intentional from Gonan. And CC Brain did take advantage of that, which uh, he's probably at liberty to do. And Lakitu, the second driver, to go into the 1 minute 28, 4 thousandths of a second off of uh, of who's gone on pole quite early in the session actually so uh, must be that confidence that they have gained throughout uh, when getting on the podium last race yeah by the looks of thing it is maybe pat is using his motivation that he definitely needs and uh, i've just disconnected again it's, it's not liking me today is it uh, it, it, it really isn't no i think what i might have to do is uh it may be due to the overlay program that I have that's causing too much data. So if it doesn't, if it carries on like that, I might have to stop it, which is a bit of a shame because I was hoping for a, a lot more to happen. It, it wasn't playing up yet earlier on. So yeah, I've, luckily I've got one spare invite. So hopefully I could just join in yet again as quickly as I can. <laughs> so sort of sorry about this, guys, for the technical issues. <laughs> Uh, I could probably send some a couple extra invites just whilst we're loading into the race, just in case it's uh, causing issues later. Yeah, thank you very much, and I'll try, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try and get in very quickly. So, uh, yeah, it is a bit, it is a bit of a shame that I'm not getting um, the stuff that I need to at the moment. But uh, um, luckily, with I think the overlay stuff, I get to get to change. Right, uh, so Ski Van has retired from the session and unfortunately we can't see uh, who's gone purple really potentially apart from uh, 
Big C. As Big C, I think I've just gone back in a session, which is all good. Golan and Az retired as well. Shapalili is on pole position. We've got Dario in Ooh. second place. Louis has retired from the session. So it, I think, and uh, I think, yeah, I think that's I think that's it apart from Lakitu. So oh, no, nope, Lakitu's done as well. I think. Yeah, everyone's done by the looks of things. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we're at the end. Yeah, we are at the end of the session. So, yeah, that is unfortunate. I was watching uh, M&T Louis just finishing off his lap, of course, his first race in uh, season 26. And uh, he was just coming through the final corner. Seemed like he got a snap of over still or something of the likes. And he went into the wall. So, uh, yeah, that was an unintentional retirement from him. And unfortunately, that put an end to his lap, which he looked like he was improving on. Not by too much, but it was definitely an improvement there. Uh, I'm not too sure if I can hear Jess at the moment. Oh, oh, sorry, my uh, mic was muted. Uh, I don't oh. know why that. So anyway, Chapelini in first, Dario second, Pat in third, Lakitu fourth, City Brain fifth, Will Sip, Hadler seventh, Emoti eighth, Gone in the ninth, Kurat seventh. Then we got Louis, Benny, Compassion, and I didn't see what was uh, going on later on, uh, earlier on as well. So I'm, 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 I'm probably going to do a few things um, to. Uh, um, to make sure that um, the uh, thing is uh, sorting out. But uh, it looks like we've got a dry session, so that's a relief. <laughs> yeah, now with that dry session, we are probably going to see everyone outside the top 10 starting on either the mediums or the hards. I probably expect them to go onto the hards, run hards to the medium tyres and have the OP alternate strategy, of course, that is so prevalent on this game. And China is one of the most... Uh, dominating for that strategy so we're probably going to see that whipped out for a lot of those guys starting outside of the top 10 probably was due to some drivers sandbagging uh, we saw a lot of drivers who weren't actually where they really should be so I think it's because they want the strategy and they uh, are going to push for it in this race yep exactly so we're just waiting for the final few drivers to ready up and uh, we, are, we are about to kick off then this race and it looks like obviously the top 10 they will have to start on the tire that they set their fastest uh lap on which is the soft compound tires and then they will have to um the well the people outside the top 10 they can start on whatever tire that they want to so yeah we'll have to wait and see on that one and i think quite a few people are going to be opting for quite a few different things right now. So we've got Louis. Let me just change scenes, actually. Give me a second. So we've got uh, we've got Louis on the mediums, Benny on the mediums, Compassion on the hards, Fads on the hards, Tomato on the hards, Greeny on the on the hards, Big C on the hards, Bugatti on the hards, Ski Van on the mediums, and Name Changer on the hards compound tyres. So uh, that is what. Um, everybody is on at the moment so who do you think is going to win this race what is your prediction uh well who is the leader on the alternate strategy that is my question that is louis oh uh, i think hearts of the medium is actually a better strategy choice because as the race goes on the hards get better and better so uh, running later onto those then going onto the mediums right at the end I think it might be compassion to have a really good race. Uh, Faz as well, and Tomato, but Louis and Benny certainly not out of it here. And of course, uh, some of the guys at the front of the grid, I would definitely expect to be uh, towards the top. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I can't really give you a definitive strategy based on. Uh, ba uh, sorry, prediction based on where they are because this track is just so, so unbalanced when it comes to the strategy. It's just the alternate strategy or broke. Yeah, well, we, we've seen last week in F1 as well the alternate strategy work as well, but we technically saw the alternate strategy work last week, but there was a safety car, so, you know, anything can happen in Formula 1, and I think these guys are going to prove that um, the, anything can happen, and we could see a few surprises. So a few facts about this track before we get on with the race. First held in 2004, costed $400 million 
to make. And uh, this is a track where we also saw Nico Rosberg took his first win in Mercedes back in 2012. And we saw Michael Schumacher took his 91st and final F1 victory um, here on this very circuit. And we, we well know who actually uh, got the same amount of wins this weekend. It was Lewis Hamilton. So there we go. So we are about to get started with this race. I hope you're all ready for 28 laps worth of racing action here today. So the five red lights about to come up on your screens right now the uh, everyone's got their overtaking button poised are we ready to go racing we've got chapelle on the right and down on the left and it's lights out and away we go good start for the pen and good start from the racing point of pads they all make through the sweeping pass turn one as well pat trying to cover um on the outside of dario then into turn two and into turn three looks like a majority of people have got away okay watch out for this middle bit of turn two and three but i think no damage is there they all made it through very, very cleanly. A few people have already lost positions, though. Dario, though, is on a charge though, to get Chapelili in P1. Don't forget, Chapelili is a reserve um, in this league. And if he can prove himself in this race, he can very well be full-time if someone drops out. Yeah, right now they're going three abreast, coming through the long left-hander. That's uh, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth and seventh. And somehow they all came out of that unscathed. Pat, uh, sorry, Kurax and Will still going side by side. And Kurax trying to hold him around the outside. There's contact between the, ter the two of them. Kurax has to go off the circuit using the runoff. And here's someone up coming up behind. It's Hadler on Iamotti. Uh, sorry, not Iamotti. He's trying to have a look on Will. So they're all getting quite racy in the early parts of the race. And it is all kicking off further back down the order because they're running two by two by two like Noah's Ark. Yeah, but it is like Noah's Ark at the moment for these guys. And uh, Will, don't forget, he's got a championship to uh, contend with at the moment. And he's uh, down in seventh place. So he's got a lot of work to do. But uh, he is probably going to sit back a little bit. He's found a lot of traction going in into the hairpin, coming towards the final few corners as well. Hadler has got the move passing Mossy then into that same uh, hairpin. And Hadler is up into eighth place. Gollanen is trying to get the move past Benny. I think Gollanen was almost went off the circuit there so gone and has uh, dropped a bit unfortunately some of the cars are ghosts i can't tell uh, um, who they are at the moment but i did see uh no it is chapelili that's still leading i thought someone overtake took chapelili for the lead but no chapelili is still leading this race with dyer in second pablo in third place i'm trying to see who's in fourth it might be lakitu no it's not lakitu i'm not entirely it's pat so uh, Pat has dropped, uh, no, Pat's in third, Lakita's in fourth, yes, I was right. So hopefully those uh, things uh, change pretty quickly. CC Brain is trying to make a move past Lakita pretty soon. We can't do it yet due to the nature of these corners coming up here as well. Well, I could see, Dan, quite a few people be very brave tonight just to try and get some extra points in this championship. Yeah, absolutely. There's not too many places you can realistically overtake. There are a lot of places where you can definitely have some great, great battles. And uh, I'm pretty sure that some of these guys are going to commit to doing that. I think the timing screen is a little bit glitched at the moment as uh, Chapelele's had a really good start at the moment. He's just got Dario catching up behind him. No DRS, of course, on uh, lap number two. But Dario's had to use quite a bit of his ERS to actually keep up to the uh, reserve driver tonight. And they're both coming through the hairpin now. And you can see how he's closed up visually of course no timings uh, for the very least and they're still just squabbling further down the order i can see them all hustling and jostling for positions yeah they are as well obviously dario being fastest at the moment so he's already faster than chapelini so he's going to carry that momentum into the rest of this race he's going to have drs pretty soon there's only two drs's on this very uh, circuit so uh, a le little bit less to worry about if I was in Chapalili's shoes. But we're starting to see the train from basically Chapalili all the way down to, I would say, last place. No one has been making any mistakes at the moment. No one has gone in and to the pits to uh, change any front wings, which is quite surprising, to be honest. So uh, well done to these guys for uh, providing some great battles so far. You've got to be in, uh, within a few temps. There's a few guys. I mean, Lakita's out of DRS range. That is not good for him that's going to allow CC Brain to sense an opportunity into the next DRS straight coming up very soon at the start of set to three yeah absolutely as you said they're all really close together the field spread is about 12 and a half seconds uh, between 20 drivers so that is 
quite something else. And now DRS has been enabled, so it will give the opportunity to Darren to close up to Chapelele even more. These two just seem to run away from each uh, from the rest of the pack. And meanwhile, they're still squabbling. I think Gononen's gone off the circuit, and oh, Gononen's spinning around Aww. on the exit. Is he going to come back into the circuit? Luckily, he's ghosted, and uh, that could have been catastrophic. If he came back onto the racing line and hit everyone. Meanwhile, Tomato's sailing past Louis there, and Louis is going to try to fight it back into the hairpin. So with the DRS being enabled, they're all starting to squabble just that little bit harder. Yeah, I think that's what a majority of people are doing, to be honest. And this is really great to see. I did see, did say that they could be taking a few more races. And that's what a majority of these guys are doing. Tomato, though, our championship leader, is only in 10th place. But uh, he's going to be very happy that Faz, his championship rival, is down in 19th place. Not having a good race at all. And I think the only championship rival he's got to worry about um, in the grand scheme of things now is Will and Greeny LFC. So Greeny LFC is down in 13th position, so he's lower down. So Tomato is only uh, behind Will at this stage. So he's not going to lose too much points on those hard tyres. And he may prove, top tip may prove that the alternate strategy could work around China. I did see, I think, around F8 as well, someone who had a qualifying ban still managed to go and take the victory after starting on the, heart, on the alternate strategy and made it work. So it could be possible for Tomato. Maybe he was watching the F8 race last week and the uh, so it could uh, pay off for him. And uh, we are at the crossover point now. The Sovs are losing its optimum uh, pace at the moment. So we could see more people starting to struggle with Sung Whip. And we can see guys on the mediums and the hard, such as Tomato, Louis and Benny, start to come into their own and start to catch up to the big train that's forming at the moment. Yeah, one driver I think is struggling a lot at the moment. It's Kurak, he's just lost the position to uh, Will on the straight and he's going to break a little bit later than the upper town return. They're going to go side by side on exit here and now coming up towards the final corner. It looks like Kurak's had a much better run and he's got the inside line for the next corner but I think Will has dived into the pits and yeah that is lap number five so I think that is uh, time for most of the soft runners to start pitting. We will see some of these guys come in very very shortly but uh, yeah Kurak beginning to struggle a lot. He's really really dropped off from the top five and it's going to be holding up Hadler and re and the uh, top six monster which is going to be reeling them in every single lap yeah I think so as well Kurax is I think he's just losing a bit of tyre temperature and you can tell his tyres are starting to struggle with the wear and everything at the moment and you know that is gutting for uh, the racing point driver but there's still a, a long way to go in this race we're not even halfway into this race so uh, you never know he could tr I think if I was him Maybe pitting now is falling to wheel um, because you're getting stuck in this traffic and then try and respond to the people that could be pitting but not because the hards they could last quite a bit in this Grand Prix and um, I'm actually going to just check when the predicted pit window is going to be. It could last 23 laps around this circuit so lap 5 to 7 the pit window opens now so as a uh, oh yeah uh Kurat is struggling with his tires he needs to pit otherwise he's going to be held up so much Hadler's going to go past him and I'm almost certain Tomato is going to go past him as well ha well Tomato is going to go past Hadler at least going into the straight here which he does and we got we can see Hadler trying to cover him off there but the cameras are not showing it to the full effect at this stage but we can see uh, Hadler trying to go and make for the switchback and he goes into the pits as well and Kurats can read my mind Dan he's in the pits we also got Dario, Pat, Lakitu um, pretty much quite a majority of people on the subs have appeared apart from our race leader Shapalili and last week's race winner CC Brown. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, now, of course, those two are going to be the slowest drivers on the circuit based on tyre life alone. So it really is going to be crunch time if they want to come in this lap just to cover off the uh, charging tox. Uh, sorry, just Tomato now, Shizu Tomato, uh, because he is on those hard tyres and he's going to be running a lot longer into the race. And we've got some yellow bag through sector one. I'm trying to work out who that is. I don't see anyone that's gone off. So it might have just been a, Someone a visual out of the glitch way. there. It might have been Lakitu because he's behind Will now. Yeah, it, it, it probably is Lakitu. He was he was struggling on those hards. And the hard tyres, they take a long time to warm up in this circuit. I've known from experience due to my team as well. And, you know, Will, I think, has probably warmed up the most. And uh, probably he didn't have the benefit to warm up his tyres because he's in that dirty air with Will. And if, a, if there's a track where dirty air is not helpful, China is one of those tracks. So Lakitu has got... 
Move out of the way of Will pretty quickly. Try and get that move. Try and be, try and go quickly on him. He's gained a bit more speed heading into sector three. So he should be uh, absolutely fine there going on to this back straight. He's going to get DRS, of course. Will, unfortunately, won't get DRS. We've got Chapalili and CC Brain in to the pit then. So Dario at the moment, your net race leader out of the ones who appeared already with Pat and net second. Can the likes of Chapalili and CT Brain capitalize on it as both of these guys trying to do the, as fast as pit stop as they possibly can. So Chapalili comes out. It's a pretty good pit stop for him. So is CT Brain as well. It may be closer to Chapalili, but for CT Brain, I'm not entirely sure what is going to happen. So Dario, uh, Dario is ahead of Chapalili by the looks of things. Yes, he is. So the undercut strategy is paramount around here. He, he's, he's got uh, past uh, Chapalili in the pit stop. So I wonder if these guys are on the hard compound of tyres um, and uh, on, on a similar strategy like Greeny, Bugatti, Compassion, out of this group, you've got to be thinking about doing the, the undercut. Yeah, and it has worked a treat for Dario here. Now uh, Schiaparelli is only saving grace at the moment. It's that he's just within DRS range of the Alfa Romeo car who has shown his pace. So if he could just stick with the, the Italian, he could probably be happy with his race. But uh, he's really beginning to lose out just a little bit. 1.1 seconds now. And he's looking like he's struggling at the moment with the tyres. I think that uh, Louis is going to be under pressure from Greeny at the moment. We saw a lap earlier him lose the position to Benny. And now the Ferrari could take advantage of the vulnerable McLaren now moving to the inside line on the uh, Frenchman. It's an easy move into the breakers only moves across him to cover him off. There might have been a little bit of contact. And actually, Louis is going to go for a little switchback move and now they're trying to go side by side, but he's going to have to back out there. Greeny is going to move into third position. Louis down into fourth. Yeah, Louis lost losing a bit of time, but this is his first race. He is a reserve and he's not doing too bad on those medium tyres. He's the second slowest out of the ones on the mediums at the moment. So he wants, he wants to try hard to try and get past uh, the Ferrari driver, but uh, is, there's no means feat. Greeny is very experienced in this tier. Obviously, he is the league admin as well as uh, CC Brain as well. And again, apologies, I've got both of these mixed up in the in the intro earlier on. I was trying to sort out multiple things at the same time. It just got very, very confusing. But anyway, we've got uh, Bugatti then, who is right on the back of Louis. I think we are could potentially see the crossover point start to emerge for the mediums now. The hards are definitely going to be the faster tyre if you've been on the mediums for this long now. The pit window is lap 11 to 13, but we can see the mediums being a lot slower from now on. Don't forget the softs were slower at, on lap four, a few laps before people were due to pit. So um, this just goes to show that you've really got to be on your A games, otherwise you're going to lose so much time being held up in a sandwich, just like Louis is doing at the moment. Louis is probably going to be on his A game, maybe going to the pits. The hards can go to the end from here. It's probably not what he wants, but he could have advantage of his rivals, try and get in some clearer air, be on fresher tyres. We can see Bigaki trying to get past him. But with that dirty, yeah, unfortunately, can't get past. Oh, Louis made a mistake almost. That was uh, close there. But I wonder if Louis is going to go into the pits now. Nope, he's not. He stays out for another lap. So I think he's going to keep the strategy that he was going for for a long time. But will this come back to bite him later on in the race? Oh, well, only time will tell me. There's a battle going on for 11th at the moment. Of course, the uh, front row of the grid. Uh, belonging to Schiaparelli and Dario uh, Schiaparelli, the German, found his way past the Italian up towards the hairpin turn number 15, if I'm not mistaken. And now through turn number one, uh, Dario's going to be on the back foot here because he's now got to negotiate past the McLaren. And if those two want to be fighting for the win later on in the Grand Prix, they really cannot afford to be uh, squabbling for the lower down positions because all it's going to do is make them lose time. But it uh, looks like at the moment, Dario's going to back off from Schiaparelli, not going to try anything too stupid uh, to get both of their races completely uh, over and done with too early hitting an early shower would not be what they'd like uh, so yeah just got to back off and uh, try as hard as you can to get to the end yeah they've got to really to be honest because otherwise it's going to cost them more time than gaining really but uh, Dalia knows how to win a PSGR race before we've seen them in at Monza um, Chapalili has won quite a few league races in the past but just not at this scale. Don't forget, it is a line-only tier, so uh, it's a different experience for him, but he's used to it in some other leagues as well, so uh, we'll have to wait and see if he can handle the pressure. But just look at that straight line speed that Chapalili is carrying 
um, in this back straight at the moment. He is doing ever so well going in towards turn, well, going towards turn 14 right now at the moment. It's around about five tenths, but Dario is gaining on the corners. But I think Dario is going to benefit more from Chapalili due to the fact that there are more corners around here. But Chapalili is going to gain time on the straight. So you per it's really important to find that balance. Ski Van goes in the pits, but meanwhile we can see Bugatti getting past Louis there into turn three. And that is the position gained for him and a position lost for Louis. And he again, he decided not to pit. I'm guessing he's probably going to regret that decision now. Yeah, but he could probably go for maybe one or two more laps. Then that is going to be a sweet spot. But that was a great battle that I was just witnessing there between Bugatti and Louis running side by side throughout most of the final sector. And of course, the uh, opening parts of the lap. So uh, Bugatti eventually did come out on top. And that really does go to show how much the uh, medium tyres are going off at this point. I expect Benny, who's doing a pretty good job keeping uh, away from Green. He seems to be socially distancing from <laughs> everyone else on the grid at the moment. But... Uh, yeah, Louis really beginning to struggle with the tyres and I do think that it is uh, the crossover point. The hards will be quicker than the mediums uh, that have been going on since the beginning of the race. Uh, that is probably definite at this point. Yep, it is. I thought it, was, I thought it was slower already, but that was for the likes of Louis that are quite slow anyway. So, but for the ones like Benny and the ones like, uh, yeah, I think it's just Benny actually. I think Green is going to gain just a little bit more time, which he is at the moment. So, Benny is going to do the undercut on Louis, which is going to try to. Louis will have to respond, which he doesn't. That's going to lose him more trap position at the moment, but here comes Benny. I think he's going to go onto the hard compound of tyres, which he does as he's waiting for his garage. A few of the pit crews are ready to go with their medium runners as well. The hards are going to just wait just a little bit longer. And uh, the hards, Dan, they have a benefit. They can either to see how long the hards go on to. It lasts for about 21 laps. If they think they could stretch to 21 laps, they can go on the softs um, or 22 laps. But if they think they can't last that long, they can go on the mediums. This is going to be a big decision for the likes of Name Changer, Big C, Compassion, Bugatti, Greeny and Tomato. Tomato is your race leader, 3.5. You don't want to be making a mistake where um, if you can get your tyres uh, to last that long, then but we'll have to wait and see. But what would you do if you were on the hards in that situation? Uh, if I was on the hards, I would probably opt to uh, pit a little bit earlier, go on to the medium times because the softs really don't have much pace for too long around here. So uh, realistically, it's not a viable strategy. So I'd probably uh, opt for the medium tyres at the end of the race and then uh, run to those and be quicker than all the hard runners who have been on their tyres for a long time. But this train getting larger and larger as the laps go by. And it looks like Faz is a uh, right behind name changer, but just that DRS effect that is uh, being allowed to him uh, is not allowing for Faz to get past because of the DRS and slipstream from Big C. These guys are all kind of just conjugating the same bit of tarmac and uh, they can have a brilliant fight coming up soon. But uh, then name changer, the same is for Big C because he's sitting in the DRS of Compassion who's really dropped off actually from Louis and uh, Bugatti. There might have been a mistake from the Alfa Romeo driver. Uh, but yeah, they'll all probably have a great fight later on uh, at the end of their tyre life. Yeah, this, this is going to be very, very exciting. We've seen some great battles at the end of PSGR races before, and I think we're going to get exactly the same as well. And we're already seeing, Dan, as well, that ERS usage, usage sorry, starting to come down for pretty much all these guys. A lot quicker than I thought. Name changer going for a brave move past uh, Big C there, and I think he'll be pretty happy with that as well. So name changer up into sixth place on the track, at least. I wonder what gonna, what's going to be when these guys have pitted before, pitted of course. So Name Changer is now really close to Compassion at the moment as we go past uh, this uh, one of the, well, the final bat straight of Sector 2. Let's see what traction he gained on exit. Quite a little bit actually, but uh, I think Compassion is going to get better straight line speed getting the DRS. And Name Changer will get DRS luckily and so will Big C too, but Faz is getting ever so quicker on Big C. Both of them trying to leave as much space as they can, but Faz just being ever so quicker, being a temp uh, behind Big C there, it was basically inevitable. Faz got the job done and I think Big C didn't challenge that at all. So Faz up in a 2 seven position now and Faz, he, he's got a championship to win and he wants it badly. 
So uh, he wants to try and get uh, these positions as he possibly can. We are seeing, though, uh, some pit windows pop up. So we, we are seeing Faz potentially going on to the medium tyres. So you think he can't go on to the softs. And we are seeing Louis that just pitted onto the hard compound of tyres. A few laps earlier than I thought it was going to be. But we will see. But uh, this, this train is getting ever more exciting with Compassion, Name Changer, Faz and Big C as well. Yeah, and it was a really great move on uh, Big C that Name Changer made. It was uh, kind of your classic uh, open lobby dive bomb. You know, if it works for them, then it can work for the pros like Name Changer. And it was a really clean move. And uh, he just thought, you know, if the window is open, I'm going to go through it. I'm not going to wait for it to be almost shut to make my move. So it was uh, just a great opportunity for him. And now he's on the back of Compassion. See if we really have come alive in uh, the later part of his stint. And now coming up towards the second sector split, he is right on the tail of the Alfa Romeo car and a big lockup from Compassion there. It'll be interesting to see who's going to get the better exit. Both the RS situations seem to be pretty similar, but this time by Compassion is a uh, loser. He's lost a lot of time to Name Changer. He's about five tenths back, half a second from the Alfa Romeo, but now the ERS is open and we're going to see that gap rapidly come down. Name Changer could go up the inside here, you know. He's gaining, he's gaining, and now into the braking zone they go. He's going to go side by side into the hairpin, and it is a job well done from Name Changer. He covers off the switchback and now Name Changer into fourth position. What a move on Compassion, who's uh, just going to lose a little bit of time, get the DRS, and now oh, a three second time penalty for the Dutchman. Not going to be what he wants from that. That's definitely not as well. Don't forget, time penalties can make a difference in this race. We see this last week, Pat getting less penalties than the majority of these rivals. He got a podium out of this. We could see a second podium from Pat this race. He's in a net third at the moment. He's still driving ever so well. I'm going to try not to jinx it. CC Brain could be on course for that as well. As we got our first retirement, unfortunately, of Kurats as he's retired from the pit lanes. Why Jimmy's had enough after the trouble he's had earlier on, which is a bit of a shame, but he's done the right thing. He hasn't retired on track. Let's see how he does in Bahrain when we head there next week. Um, I think I think we're in Bahrain next week. I need to double check that at the moment. We've got another yellow flag in set to one, but that is probably just today's AI going out. Yeah, it is his AI going out. I can see it on the track map. So, Tomato still leads on track with Green in second, Bugatti in third, and then we've got another train of name changer, Compassion, Faz, Chapalili could be on the back of this as well on his fresher hard tyres. Chapalili does not want to be heart held in this battle. He wants to make sure that he's clear of that because otherwise Dario and Pat could see this as a great opportunity to uh, snatch the win off him. Yeah, meanwhile, just further up ahead, up the road from Chapelele, all oh, compassion going really deep on the brakes, and uh, so did Faz. They both pretty much outbroke themselves, but now Faz getting the switchback move on compassion. He's going to lose the position to the Renault oh! car. They make contact. Faz going off the circuit, almost putting it in the gravel. Chapelele now going to have to uh, get closer to those guys, and he will have DRS on Faz. But there was a little bit of a touch there. I think that uh, Faz just turned a little bit too early for compassion's liking, and it was just uh, a. It's so unfortunate. It does happen quite often, and uh, a little bit of miscommunication between the drivers, and unfortunately, it led to uh, Faz with his brilliant overtake pretty much being completely undone, and both of them losing time to Name Changer. Yeah, Name Changer must be loving this as well. It's going to help him when Name Changer goes into the pits. He's going to have a nice, comfortable gap between these two as well. But I think Chapalili is uh, going to be a bit worried as well that uh, Faz may make the same mistake on him but uh, we will we shall see of course uh, Chapalili and uh, actually apart from Louis Chapalili has already been scoring a lot more points than the other McLaren teammates both uh, Cedric and Luke as well both of them can't make it here tonight Luke not scoring a single point this season and already Chapalili already showing why he should des he could deserve a full time seat in PSGL in the future, maybe next season in season 27. Don't forget, this China hasn't been around on the calendar for a very long time. Season 23 was the last time China was on the F, uh, well, the PSGL calendar. I think it was round two, I believe, as well as Chapalili's hit the back of yeah. Faz. Oh my goodness, so both of them's got damage. Chapalili will have to pit, Faz will have to pit. That is not good. For both. Actually, no, they're not pitting. There might just be minor damage, but it looks... Well, Faz has to pit, surely. But I think Chapelier, he could just carry on like no tomorrow. But, yeah. 
Was Faz gonna pit anyway, or <coughs> would he would he would he wanted to wait a few more laps just to get his head into gear? I think he might have wanted to pit because everyone else was coming to the pit, so it probably isn't too harmful for him. But gonna get that wing change is not gonna help his championship challenge. I'm a bit confused how Chapelle actually went into the back because from what it looked like. Uh, but Faz actually outbroke himself and went into the back of uh, Compassion. There was a little bit of contact between him there ah. and then Schiaparelli. I just went on board of him uh, right as he made contact, so I didn't quite see him go straight into the back of him, so to say. Uh, but uh, I don't know how he did that. He is known for his mistakes, unfortunately, despite being a really quick driver. So uh, this is not going to help his confidence. And uh, hopefully he can still get some points out of this race because uh, he has done really well so, like in qualifying. But now he's going to be dropping like a stone in water. He's got uh, Pat right behind him. Should be an easy overtake for the uh, German driver. Yep, it should be at the moment. I'm um, Chapelini. He's trying his best to defend, but there's nothing more I think Chapelini can do, unfortunately. So uh, uh, Chapelini Chap uh, will have to solve for P3 um, in this race so far as Tomato goes in into the pit lane. Look at that gap. 17 seconds is the pit loss. So Tomato's not going to be that far behind uh, Dario when he comes out of the pit lane. So uh, this, this could prove our theory that the alternate strategy could work for Tomato. Uh, maybe not. I, I was just uh, getting my hopes up as Tomato is dropping down to, I think, around fourth, fifth place. He's going to be on the mediums, though. And he's right behind Lakitu as well. He's going to take a while for his tyres to warm up. But he's still going to be in a very good position to try and fight some podiums. He's, I think, about two seconds behind CT Brain as well. And about four seconds behind uh, um, Hat, too. So... This is this is going to be intense for Tomato, but if there's a chance for him to gain points of his, off his championship rivals, this is the opportunity. Will, uh, Will, his rival is right behind him, so is Faz now due to the contact, and so is quite a few other people as well. I wonder if some of the other guys should have pitted there and then, but yeah, well done, well, well done for Tomato for doing what he did. Game on for him. This could be a championship changing moment if he gets these moves done. Yeah, and the first of which is going to be the key to coming up towards the second sector split. Of course, he's not going to go for a move through there. Pretty much be suicide for him. But on the straight, it's going to be absolutely crucial. He needs to get uh, past these guys who are going to be uh, slower than him uh, as soon as possible. And he's going to burn up some of his ERS and overtake. And now opening the DRS down the straight. First of many for Tomato. He's going to go up the inside of, of Bikita. Bikita's not even going to try and fight this. The alternate strategy has worked a treat for Tomato. 6.4 seconds is the gap to Dario, and that is just going to come uh, further and further down each and every lap. And I think Top to Tomato could be on for an absolutely storching drive. Yeah, the, the, the loss between the softs potentially and the heart and the mediums, only about seven temps of a second well even all six temps so it's not that much compared to the sauce where the hard you lose so much more time compared to the medium so tomato this could be game on for him as well we did see i think Imossi uh trying to go for moves as well past will so Imossi is up into six will down and said we've got another person on the alternate strategy as well greedy trying to uh, make some more positions past his um rivals as well we've got will and Imossi there hadler in a sandwich with Bugatti as well. Name changer has got a lot of work to do. Big C has just pitted a few laps ago. Big C was the one who pitted the earliest out of all the hard uh, runners. And nobody on the hard tyres had gone for the softs. So I think it just goes to show that the softs around here towards the end of the race, there's just no point going on it unless it's like a safety car. Yeah, and uh, it is pretty much suicide if you do go on to uh, the soft tyres. So the mediums is the best strategy. We saw Greeny just swoop by on the inside of uh, Will, and he could make it two drivers in one uh, one lap. But meanwhile, that is Tomato moving up into a podium position ahead of CC Brain. So uh, the Ferrari drivers making moves. One of them going the uh, right way, the other going in uh, quite the wrong direction. Now the gap is 4.9 seconds, and that was over one lap. It was about six and a half, I want to say. Now it's 4.7. That is just say inc that is insane how quick Tomato is on circuit right now. I'm not sure how many penalties Tomato has got at the moment. Again, I will check in a second. Meanwhile, Greeny definitely going the right way again. He's made another position. He's gone past uh, Emotti and up in a two-six place. So Ferrari 
They're going to be scoring some good points in this race if they keep this up. Ferrari are third in the constructor standings. And then we've got both of the runners. Faz is not going to be scoring any points. Lakitu is probably only going to be scoring. Because then we get first place, get 16. And then we've got... Uh, I, I need to try and remember the, the points tally. But yeah, it is quite different to what in normal Formula 1, which means the points are a lot closer together. But... Uh, Keita will probably want to be scoring more points than that. But um, uh, it's not long to go to this race. We've got not 10 laps to go of this uh, Chinese Grand Prix. I almost said Bahrain Grand Prix. I do not know why there. But Tommaso is on the... Well, basically, he is the browsing horse at the moment. He's purple set to two. And he's going to probably get fastest lap of this race if he keeps us up. Maybe if this strategy works in China, he could try it in Bahrain as well. Bahrain is similar type of strategy I think for these guys and I don't think Tomorrow is going to make the move on this corner but he's going to make it towards the, uh, the pretty much the start finish straight maybe heading towards turn one so just look at the time he's gained now he's around three temps Dyer would want to hope that these two keep battling for so long because he can stretch that gap a little bit more yeah but now coming on to the start finish straight Deer is open for Tomato and uh, perhaps not even going to fight this. Coming up towards turn number one, he's got clear air. The gap is 2.9 seconds. He's got, he's just got to be as consistent as possible. Nine laps to go left in this Grand Prix. He could be on for a brilliant win. Meanwhile, uh, Ski Van and Benny going side by side. Looks like Benny's run really wide coming through turn number one. And now, oh, Chapalili's oh, out. Retired. And that is, that is not in the pits. He's lost the car. You could see a safety car. And there it is. He calls it. That was... Oh, is it? There's nobody coming towards the final corner. It looked like he binned it in one of the either the left hand wall or the left, right hand wall just for the start finish line. I it don't might... know how he would have done it on his own. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, this could prove game changing for pretty much all of these drivers. What would you do if you were the likes of Dario? You're going to be in safety car conditions. In non-safety car conditions, the soft can last seven laps. They're going to hope that the, the safety car is in for like two or three... Well, the safety car is out for two or three laps. And then you should be absolutely fine. Otherwise, you're going to be, probably be a little bit worried. Like, you know, it's going to be a tough decision. Maybe some of these guys will go for the gamble for the soft tyres. See how it works. Hope that everybody doesn't catch up to the safety car that quickly. And uh, jobs are good. And then you could get that win. We could see a similar strategy to last week Tomato probably didn't want that safety car he probably had the win in the bag but unfortunately he's going to see the likes of Dario and Pat pitting on no Dario's not pitting Nina is Tomato Nina is Pat Nina is CC Bray Lakitu no one's pitting I thought a lot more people would be going on the sauce but I'm guessing they don't want to take that risk and they know that the sauce I'm not good around here. I did see Will going to the pit. No, I did see someone going to the pits. That's Ski Van. Not Will, sorry. And a few penalties in the bag. But I, th I think it's too early to go on the soft. But do you think Ski Van will want to try to gamble and see if it works? He might go for it. Let's see uh, what size he's putting on it. Is the red. The red wall tyres going off Ski Van and for Name Changer. All these guys outside the top 10. Why not take the gamble? You're not going to lose any points by pitting. Uh, you're losing track position, but you're going to get that back pretty easily. Of course, mandatory two laps. The safety car has to stay out for, so we're going to have this lap and most likely next lap as well. And uh, that will put us out onto circuit with uh, six laps to go. So these tyres can definitely make it. I would say that it'll be rough towards the end for them. Uh, but now that the track is more rubbered in, they probably have a little bit more longevity for them. Yep. It lasts longer in safety car conditions because you're not going at full pace at the moment. Remember when the last... We, we've had a safety car for quite a bit and the, one, the races that had safety car, with most of those safety cars, we've had different winners. Will in Belgium, CC Brain in Japan. I don't know. We could... We, we, we don't know. I think all the top four are penalty free. And... Tomato could still have the race win in the bag because he's on the fresher tyres compared to everybody else. If everybody else pitted, they would have lost track position anyway. Dario's already trying to warm up his tyres and uh, Tomato keeping it steady at the moment, as you can see at the moment. It's not going to be that long before it comes in because we're just waiting for Gonanen, I believe, to catch up to the safety car. Actually, no, we've still got Big C, uh, Louis, Faz and Gonanen to catch up. So 
four cars and then we're gonna probably be going racing but I'm just I'm still trying to think where would Chapalini retire I think from what I've heard Chapalini made or Chapalini and Faz made contact and I believe it could have been in the wall on the left hand side that we're going on board now on the on the left well on the left when you're going on board on the right when you're going out board but there we go so I think that's what happened so I think Faz would have ha I think Faz pitted anyway uh, but at least he's got damage out of the way anyway so I can't call who's going to win this race. I think it's going to be to see who who has a, has war pace, to be honest with you, and who has chosen the right tyre to stay on to. I really think this is still going to swing the way of Tomato. Uh, I don't think that Darry's going to be able to hold him off too much. I think the driver that this has helped the most is Greeny because it is bunched up. All of uh, the hard runners in front of him, he could be on for second place by the end of the Grand Prix if he just times his moves right. Uh, it looks like the Germans coming out in full force. Of course, the podium last week was uh, Pat, Cece, Bren and Lakitu. They're now running third, fourth and fifth. So uh, we're starting to see a bit of a dynasty. And uh, hmm, I'm just trying to think when the last time we saw a German dynasty in F1 was. You know, we've had quite a few, haven't we? What, German wins? Ooh... I'm because obviously Rafa's a German, and I'll, I'll need to get the. Sp Unfortunately, one thing that we forgot to put on our spreadsheet was what nationality they're from, which is very annoying because uh, we should have. Um, next time, I'm, what I'm going to try and do is probably make a note of them when we're in the lobby, which will give us a little bit more of an idea. But we do see quite. I think Pat, yeah, Pat's definitely German because of his last name. I don't know. We could, yeah, we could see, and we may see. And I think obviously tomato, and we know what tomato's nationality is as well. Yeah, I mean, this is this, this will be insane if you think about it. A, a German dominating in China, we could see a different nationality dominating in China. We'll have to wait and see. But is it me or the safety cars come in? Because I've ne I haven't seen the safety car theme pop up, or I might have just been looking at the spreadsheet. That's probably why. Did you see the safety car theme pop up? Yeah, I did see it pop up. It's definitely coming in this lap so uh, it's out to Dario to now control the pace it's his discretion as to when and uh, how they start he can go right up to the line if he wants to of course no overtaking between uh, the uh, between now and the start finish line then they are free to go the safety car is now in so they are clear to go racing but it is just up to Darren here now he's going to push uh, so he can't stop now otherwise that'd be a false restart we are green Yep, yeah, we're going to be, well, we're not green yet because we're not at the start finish straight. Now we are green here in China. And Dario had a really good restart off the line. But uh, if that's going to really help him on these final few laps. But we know Tomato is going to be breathing down the neck at the moment. Pat is just going to be waiting there at the moment. CC Brain also had a good start. Lakita staying in fifth. Greeny staying in sixth. Not much changes happening in the top ten, but outside the top ten, Compassion and Name Changer, they're going side by side. Name Changer, don't forget, is on the soft compound of tyres as well. I think one of the second people on those soft compound of tyres, and he gets the job done. Next, we've got a battle between Nikita and Greeny as well. Nikita, um losing a place to Greeny. He's now down into a sixth position at the moment. Hadler's going to be under pressure from Ski Van as well. Name Changer just got past Benny as well as all that was close from a name changer um, on Ski Van now, but kept it together as well. Let's see if Ski Van's going to go for a risky move again. I don't think he's going to go for a move yet. Don't forget, the DRS doesn't get enabled till two or three laps after the safety car gets restarted again. So they're only going to rely on the slipstream at this point. Here comes Ski Van, squeezing past Adler into this back straight. And he's up into 10th place in the points paying position. And we've got Greeny and CC Brain, the Ferrari teammates, going side by side into turn 14. Greeny gets a job done. Tomato gets a job done into the hairpin as well. Tomato takes the lead of the Chinese Grand Prix. But how much longer? Dario's trying to cover him up, almost touching. But some really good racing from both of them as they go through the start finish straight now. Patch is going to sit there pretty at the moment, not cause too much of a trouble at the moment, as we can see. Still going side by side at the moment. Who's going to get the better run here? Going into turn two and three. A, lot, a bit of a lob tap there, but uh, that is racing. And I think Tomato has just got that race lead. But well done to both of them. Some incredible racing from uh, those two. This is going to be a great battle for the lead. If Dario 
keeps up with tomorrow for the majority of this race, this could be a very good result for him. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, further down the order, Ski Van not wasting any time. He's made a good number of positions on those soft tyres, utilising them to their full extent. And now he's got Bugatti just up ahead. He's uh, not going to be too troubled with the over... Uh, sorry, he might actually be a little bit more troubled with the overtake because it is the medium tyres. And uh, meanwhile, Name Changer trying to send it on well through an unconventional uh, part of the circuit. Is he going to try and dive it here? He's known for his dive bomb, Name Changer, and he goes up the inside. Will makes a switch back, and that was a bit of a rash move from a uh, name changer. It hasn't worked out for him. Meanwhile, uh, Greeny is gonna get into the slipstream. He's not gonna use any of his ERS just right now, so I don't think he senses an opportunity to get by Pat at the moment. And uh, meanwhile, Stevan gets by Bugatti. They're all making moves down and through the order. This is great. This is what I like about league racing. All of them pushing to the absolute limit, and you never know that a safety car could change all of this. At this stage, Name Changer getting past Will once again into 10th place. DRS is now enabled for these guys. So a chance for everybody to try and gain the most possible position possible. Dario could sense an opportunity to try and get to Marto again in the final few laps. Brini, I think Brini's going to get past Pat no matter what happens. But again, we don't know about penalties they may have not served so the majority of these guys have only pitted once apart from a few towards the back that pit either twice or three times either due to damage or the safety car pack with a bit of a lockup so that's going to help greeny gain some more time we've seen ferrari score really well in this league we could see here that's the same today ski van has gained another position ski van is on the charge he's up into p7 and he could get lakita for p6 as well yeah, it seems like turn number five is his real hotspot for overtaking. He's just been sending moves around the outside of the Yamati that time by. And now two and a half tenths is the gap to Lakitu. So coming into the breaking zone, he is improving on his time. He is just absolutely rapid at this point. Definitely one of the fastest on the circuit. And now this is going to be where we're going to see most of the overtakes take place. Because opening it up. Onto the long straightaway, uh, it looks like actually oh, further up ahead, we've got Greeny for third position at the moment, trying to close in on Pat and now looking to the inside line. We go Greeny, the Ferrari car, is going to move up ahead of Pat. And meanwhile, uh, look at this, there's Skivan going up the inside of Lakitu. So Skivan has really nailed this restart and the soft gamble was so, so worth it. Yep, it is at the moment, but how would it benefit towards the end? But I think it can be worth it as well because obviously of the safety cars so it can pay off eight tenths behind cc brain and i didn't see what ski van's penalties as well so ski van be on, be on course for his best result in, in the long run don't forget ski van has been in f2 the longest out of any driver at all he hasn't had the best results as of yet he hasn't had much luck does ski van in the alpha tari um which is a bit unfortunate he's had dnf for four races in the row. His best result was Belgium, where he got a P6, uh, and Spain, where he got a P5. All the other races were either no point or DNF, so he definitely deserves this if he could get past CC Brain right here and right now. And he's still got Pat, Greeny, Dario, and his, well, actually, yeah, Pat and Greeny on his sides as well, not just CC Brain as well. So uh, he could be fine on for good points here, on for his best result of the season he just can't afford to make any mistakes now yeah it could be on for a podium at this rate uh, he's just catching at a rate of knots at the moment but now onto the straight he's uh, probably not going to make a move in through here but anything can happen and he's actually gaining by quite a lot on cc brain but yeah just the drs is really bringing cc brain along so he's not going to make a move coming in through the hairpin but he has been allowed to catch up and the name changer still trying to keep up with his soft fellow soft runner uh, but he can't find a way past that Lakita and they're still skirmishing all the way back I think I saw some damage coming off from a McLaren car of Louis MT I Louis. think was it Louis yeah it was Louis because Chapelis out the race oh yeah. careful Louis he almost hit Benny but yeah I think I, I, I'm trying to see if he's got damage but it's really really hard to tell from there from the car so we'll have a we'll have a look at that in a second as yeah gone and has gone past so yeah, Louis is probably having a terrible race at the moment. Meanwhile, Greeny, he's got past Dario so, and Pat. So, Green, and whilst, whilst all this was happening, Greeny's up into P2 of this race. Could we see a race victory on the cards for Greeny? Could we see a Ferrari win a second race in a row? It's, I don't know. It's going to be hard. 
but uh, he is gaining quite a bit. We got a yellow flag, but we're going to ignore that for a second. But yeah, Greeny is definitely on the charge as well. Skeeman is on the charge against the other Ferrari of CC Brain. Both Ferraris are going in all the right places at the moment. Absolutely. Uh, of course, I did say that it would have helped him, and I think Benny's lost the car. He's got some wing damage, yep. so uh, he's, he's just not. He's had a bad race again. And uh, unfortunately, that is going to be any points off the table for him. Uh, meanwhile, further up ahead, seems like Ski Van losing a bit of pace to uh, to the guys ahead. He's not really closing as much as he was before. And I think it is at the point where the softs have completely gone off. And uh, now we begin the final lap of the race. Tomato just has to bring it home one more time and he can continue his uh, championship hunt. Yep, uh, the tweet that we seen earlier on uh, said that he needed some luck here tonight and uh, I think it's the first time in a while where we haven't jinxed people that are on tweets, which is really good to see as well. I think Ski Van with the dirty yeah, air is not helping him and yes, uh, the crossover point was a thing about four laps, I think, um, after they've been at full pace and we've already been at four laps full pace on the softs for Ski Van. So yeah, that's why he's struggling at this moment in time. I think the same with Name Changer as well with a few lockups there from him so i think lakeith is going to stay behind benny unfortunately decides to retire from the pits and that is his race over gone and no is uh, done the same thing he is out of the race as well but we're on the final few stages of this race now 3.3 seconds i think he, he hasn't had any penalties but i think he's trying to try and get the fastest lap which is still possible because medians are the fastest tire at the moment greeny lfc is going to be on for a perfect second place of this race. He's been known for scoring a lot of podiums this season. We could be adding another podium to Greedy's list. Yeah, absolutely. Just coming up the straight, the final time, it is just one on, actually two more corners to negotiate for Tomato. He scores points in every single race, despite all of his uh, mishaps and, and skirmishes with other drivers. He really has deserved this win, though. It's his second win of the season. He's going to cross the line. He's going to extend his championship lead. Tomato wins the Grand Prix and, oh, just the cherry on top. He sets the fastest lap of the race. Well done to the Welshman. Yeah, indeed. No penalties for the top six. They all stay where they are. So we got Dario, Pat. So Dario and Greeny getting a podium. Pat in fourth place. And not a good result for him. He'll be very happy with that. This momentum from last week is going forward for him. CC Brain in fifth. Lakitu sit. We got Amosti as well. Bigatti getting some more points. Both of the Mercedes getting points after their result last week. Will, 23 laps on the hard, still gets points. I mean, that's, that's still pretty good for Will. I think he wanted a little bit higher to help his uh, championship hopes, but and driver A on the screen is showing to be toxic tomorrow. But I think I've got to say, Dan, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to agree with the uh, graphic for change. Tomorrow drove superbly today. Yeah, and a lot of that is going to be contributed to the alternate strategy. But at the end of the day, it's not about the strategy or the, how the car is set up. It is about the driver, and he has proved that today. He takes the win, and he is celebrating his second race win of the season. And now he brings a championship toll to uh, if he would be on now 80... Hmm, wait, well, so 80, it's 16, six points at the moment. Yeah, 16 points. Uh, oh, sorry, eight. Hmm. Yeah, yeah 86. So, yeah. So, wait a minute. So, yeah, 86. Hi. Wait, 16 points. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wait, so, seven, I, I, I need, well, let's do some maths in a minute. Anyway, let's go for your results then first. Because otherwise, uh, the graphics man are going to find it hard to do the results. So, anyway, Tomato is in P1. Greeny second. Dario third. Pat in fourth. CC Brain fifth. Lakiji seven, six. Emossi seven. Bugatti eight. Big C nine. And Name Changer in... Temp, Will just missing out on the point there as well. Well done to the top nine for not getting any penalties at all. We've got Ski Van in 12th. We've got Hadler, Faz, Compassion and Louis. And your retirements are Golan and Benny, Chapalili and Kurax. Let's do some maths then for the in terms of the championship punt. So that is another... So 17 points because obviously he got fastest lap. So it is 88 points. So he gets 88 points of this. So he got... The only thing he didn't get was pole, but he didn't care about that. He's got two things out there today. Yeah, well, uh, with after that display from us, I'm glad that I didn't take math for A-level because that was atrocious. I can't even add 17 onto 71. But uh, yeah, 88 <laughs> points is the uh, 
the championship lead for Toxic Tomato. Uh, I can't keep calling him Toxic Tomato, so I'm just going to call him Tomato now. And that will be definite. So well done to him. What a drive from him. And what a drive from Greeny as well. I, call, I called Greeny CC Brain earlier as well. And I think that might have paid off. So Greeny, you can thank me later for uh, what I did wrong at the start of the stream. That helped you with the positive jinx there as well so uh, that is going to promote i think dario and greeny up the championship standings as well uh, unfortunately we didn't get the uh overlay to show a bit longer than we thought but uh, it was worth a try anyway you may see it in a future stream uh maybe in f1 or in in trover but probably not in this league until my internet uh, gets better so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this stream i've been just games 95 and uh, thank you dan for joining me in the commentary box yeah, it was great to be here again. That was another brilliant Grand Prix. And make sure you join uh, PSGL F1 and F3 as they're in the middle of their qualifying session around China. Not sure about the weather at the moment. I know PSGL F3 is nice and sunny. What about F1? I'm just hanging on. Oh, it is raining in F1. Um, an intermediate qualifying. So we're not going to see the times we thought we were going to see. But uh, it's worth watching nonetheless. So make sure you watch both of them. And we will see you next week for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Have a good evening, everybody, and we will see you soon.